Wine 5 is just pretty. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world, tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. But today, I'm going to be blind tasting six great red wines from a grape that I think is the perfect steak wine. A lot of steakhouses in America at least serve a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon, but I think this grape is actually a better steak wine, and usually you're going to get more wine for the same type of price that you're paying for California Cabernet, sometimes even nice Bordeaux. And that grape, of course, is Syrah. There's a story that says that Syrah is actually originates from the city of Shiraz in Iran. And Shiraz and Syrah is the same grape. The evidence now suggests that Syrah is actually from the Rhone in France, where some of the most sought-after Syrahs are made in appellations like Cote Roti, Hermitage, Saint-Joseph, Cornas. They're some of the greatest, rarest, most collectible wines in the world. Unfortunately, I don't have any French wines here. These are all New World wines, but I think they're going to be still very awesome. When I asked you what your favorite steak wine was, nobody came up with Syrah! Stephen Holt wrote, in order, uh, Claret, Ro Claret, Bordeaux, Rhone, Rioja, Barolo, Chianti, Ribera del Duero, Brunello, and Chateau Moussard. He said, in truth, most biggish red wines go with steak. Yes, I think that's true, but I think Syrah is special. Uh, Dalibor, Galubovic, which <laughs> he says, Plavitz Mali, Croatian grape, that's close to my heart. Don Hervato says the same thing, Plavitz Mali, or Frankovka, which is Blau Frankish, which some Blau Frankish, because they can be peppery like Syrah. I agree with you. Aaron Newton, good to see you, said, Malbecs and Bold Reds. It sounds like you're gonna have to take Jen out to uh, take her to a steak dinner. Antonio, nice complex pinotage from South Africa or a bold Nebbiolo from Valle de Guadalupe in Mexico. Spent some time in Valle de Guadalupe. To tell you down there, actually, the Nebbiolo isn't pure Nebbiolo. It's blended a little bit with Piedra Rosso. Syrah has this meatiness to it, this blackberry fruit, violets, this pepperiness that just really goes well with meat. It's just the flavors are so unique that once you start to crave them, you really start to love them. I know a lot of winemakers, especially in the New World, say they just, it, it's really hard to unload Syrah. They can't unload Syrah like they can Cabernet Sauvignon, and that's unfortunate. And I don't like a lot of big, oaky red wines. The only grape that I really like when it comes to real, being a really oaky wine is Syrah. You know, one of my winemaker friends told me once, Syrah eats new oak for breakfast. I'm going to be tasting with these. These are the best glasses period I've ever used. These are the Gabriel Glass Gold Edition. These are hand blown, half the weight of a Zalto. Sometimes I think they're gonna break. They're so, so light. The only problem is they're pretty expensive, close to like 90 bucks a glass, but they just feel so nice. You can get the standard edition, the ones that are machine blown, a little bit thicker at a cheaper price. I'll put links to both in the description box. I mean, if you really wanna splurge, these are the glasses to go for. And again, I'm tasting with two different glasses. Taste two wines at a time. Like I said, if you want to learn about wine, you'll be tasting multiple wines at a time. Wine number one and two. Syrah, these are all younger vintages. Syrah is, it's a, it's a, it's a grape that not everybody loves, but when you love it, you just start to crave it. Really dark, a little bit of, kind of savage. That's why I like it. Wine one is just stereotypical Syrah. Comes right back at me. Syrah is a grape that a lot of times I think you can pick out blind. Just blackberries, black fruit, meat, pepper, this is Syrah Syrah, not a big fruity Shiraz. This is just a lovely wine. Good Syrah, like this is so peppery on the finish. And then it's had this wild stem twigginess that I associate maybe when I was a kid. Sometimes I go out in the woods and break open the green twigs during the spring and that's what it smells like. It's not for everybody. Pretty darn exceptional effort. <laughs> Okay, wine number two. Wine two is more friendlier. There's some black olive notes that you can get in, in Syrah, sometimes known as Shiraz. You know, a little fun fact, the wine was first called Shiraz in South Africa before Australia. A little more plummy, so to speak. Kind of a menthol type flavor. This smells more of like a crowd pleaser. Wine one was like wine geek wine. This is more of a crowd pleaser. Wine 2 is a little bit softer. Syrah can have some pretty aggressive chewy tannins. This kind of reminds me of some of the new age Australian Shirazes that are coming out. They're not just big, fruity, and fat. They have some of that friendliness, yet they're toned back. It's not a super high, it's not a super high alcohol jammy wine. I think that wine is very good. Really, really good. Strong showing so far. I think the reason that Syrah goes so well with the steak, there's a certain bloodiness, this meaty quality that just, it goes really well. 
That's that's why I equate it to. Let's get on with wine three and four here. Wine three is all savory leather. These are all so different wines. Savage, a little more menthol fruity, super savory and leathery is wine number three. Syrah can, can get pretty high in alcohol sometimes, so you gotta be careful. Black olive, leather, blackberries, tar. Tons of acid there, which I like. Syrah has tannin and acidity. That's what I really like. True Syrah. Wine number four. Wine number four has like this mineral type quality to it. You get the blackberries, you get the violets, the black olive, but a little bit of mineral like flavors. That's really... Wine four is just in harmony. It's just balanced. Nothing really stands out, so to speak. Just really nice. Everything's nicely in place. None of these are oak bombs or none of them are super fruity. None of them. They're, they're all great wines so far. You know, in California, there's a movement called the Rhone Rangers. They're all hell-bent on making the great wines of the Rhone in France. So I really appreciate what they're doing. And California Syrah, you're getting wines that if they were Cabernet Sauvignon, they would be three, four times more expensive for similar quality. Wine 5 is the meatiest by far. There's even a little bit of stinkiness in there. Not like smelly feet, just, <laughs> just meatiness. Just kind of that flavor. Blackberry, black olive, lots of black olive. Ooh. Wine 5 is just pretty. Usually what you smell matches up with what comes on the palate, but I like wines like this that really challenge me. On the nose, it definitely was not uh, was not super fruity. It was more savory. He may even going on the, the mode of funky, but it's quite fruity and the acid is brilliant on the palate. Nice wine. Wine number six has so much menthol in it. Just so much menthol. More blackberries, more fruity, less meaty, less savage. Oh, Syrah is so distinct. Wine six is a crowd pleaser. Not the type of wine that's usually gonna be to my liking because a little bit bigger, but in this case, it's really well done stuff. These wines are 91 to 93 plus. We're splitting hairs here. It's all about your personal palate. You know, these wines could change. A wine's a living thing, it could change. I like them now, maybe I like one more a little bit later. That's the beautiful thing about wine. So don't take these scores as gospel. You gotta like what you like. But this is how the wine showed today. Don't blame the wine. You can blame me, don't blame the wine. The wine here that I prefer the least, still 94, sorry, 91 type point, point of wine. Uh, I thought this was one of the more fruity wines, something that you could really enjoy. Still good wine, 91 points. Oh, I'm so surprised. This is the Ojai Vineyard. This is the Syrah du, Duvarita Vineyard 2018. Um, usually these Syrahs, for me, are less fruity, and I'm so surprised here. This is one of my favorite producers in the world, not just California, but the world from Santa Barbara, California. Wow, I'm so <laughs> I'm so surprised. I've had one of their wines before, the John Sebastiano Vineyard Syrah. It's one of the greatest Syrahs I've ever tasted. So I'm surprised that it showed like that, but it is what it is. Okay, here we go. These next two wines tied for 92 points a piece. Let's take a look here. Okay, <laughs> this is the sequel. This is uh, from the long. This is from Washington State, Columbia Valley Syrah. John Duval, who's made the legendary wine Penfold Grange, is one of the producers of this. Partners with Chateau Saint Michel, I think, in Washington, to create this wine. I think this is a very, very nice wine. And here's the thing here. The alcohol didn't show. I thought this was very nice stuff. This next wine, wine number five, was tied. Wow, the Delil Cellars 2018 Signature Syrah, $40. This is 2% Viognier and at 98% Syrah. This is the Cote Roti brand for people. Cote Roti, one of the smallest appellations in France, most one of the most coveted. They blend a little bit of Viognier in the Syrah because it's planted within the vineyard, so they just harvest it and ferment it together. The thing about these wines, higher in alcohol, this is 14.9, I think this is 14.5 or 15%. Does not feel like it. Really enjoyable stuff. Like the wine a lot. Wine 6, another wine that I saw it was also fruity. Not necessarily my style, but in this case, well done. 92 plus points. Wow. 8 on the gate. Family Selection Single Vineyard Shiraz 2016. 31 bucks. Nice value. Rattenbully. This is uh, near Kunawara in Australia. Not like a super well-known region, but this Shiraz. 
showed really well. These were difficult wines, really close. Uh, this was the one that has more acid. This is for more acid freaks. 93 points. Let's take a, <laughs> another legendary producer from Santa Barbara County. This is the Coupe Santa Maria Valley Biendecito Hillside Estate. $40. For people that like a little bit more acid in their red wine, I think this is an excellent wine. Uh, they are such a good producers of, I think the wines are super high quality, super value for money for what you get. And they age really, really well. That means in first place, I like this the most, 93 plus. It just showed the most Serranus to me. And look at here, the Mark Ryan from Washington State, Lost Soul, Yakima Valley 2018. This was gorgeous. 51 bucks. This is 40 bucks. 14.8 alcohol. I'm a little, I was a little bit scared. And I thought, oh man, that's just a bit much. But wow, the alcohol stayed really under control. I think that's the beauty of Syrah too. Syrah, Shiraz. The alcohol can be quite high, but it can be under control. So again, this is the wine that showed the best for me. Doesn't say it's the best wine because all of them showed well. The Coupe is the highest acid wine. The fruitiest. Uh, tied for me was the Ojai Vineyard and the Eight on the Gate. These were the, the more approachable type of wines, but what a tasting. I recommend all of these wines. Now let's try one with steak. Okay, the cool thing is my favorite wine in this tasting was the one I thought was most Syrah-like, uh, meaty, a little bit savage. Let's see if it really does go with steak, like I said. When you have the meat with the Syrah, this makes it taste a little more fruity. It's not a super fruity wine. Tannins bind the meat well, cleans off your palate. That's the beauty of wine. Let me know. Do you guys like Syrah? Do you have any favorite regions in the world? Drop it in the comments below. And I'll see you soon.